Brother Man, this is insane to be on this track here in Las Vegas for this incredible event. What did it feel like to be behind the wheel of the Mercedes on this track tonight? Uh, you got to remember, I've been doing this a long time. So, I know. So like, Was it like another day at work for you? Yeah. Or? yeah. <laughs> Like, this is nothing. Yeah, this is nothing I mean, compared to. It's like sleeping for me. Okay. <laughs> how how fast were you in in the car tonight? Uh, we weren't going very fast because there was a whole setup with the with the drones and um, we had to be in a certain speed in order. So I think we only got up to like 80 miles an hour. So it's nothing. This weekend we'll be to probably 220, 230. 230. Because the speed the the there's a straightaway that's so long. Yeah. How about about how long would you say that straightaway is? Honestly, I, I don't know. I think it's like two miles or something like that. Whoa. It's something like that. Um, but we also have like really low downforce. And so I think this will be the, I reckon this might be the fastest we'll ever go. Is that right? I think so. How do you prepare your body for going the fastest you will ever go in a race? Uh, it's just, just a lot of physical training. You know, pe I think people don't realize what we do in terms of uh, the physicality side of things. We, we can lose up to 10 pounds in the race. I remember my racing in, in Austin or Malaysia, particularly like Malaysia, you can lose up to 10 pounds in an hour and a half. So um, so it's just a lot of running, a lot of cardio. We can't be big and bulky like an NFL player, for example. The car won't go anywhere. So um, And then it's just um, cultivating a really positive and focused mental attitude because the amount of information you're, 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 gen you're taking in at 200 miles an hour yeah. is... Like it's, it's hairpin kind of decision making split, sec split second decisions yeah that that your life also depend on so Crazy. yeah okay i do i do want to ask you because we're, we're here in las vegas for this incredible event but also the formula one grand prix is going to be here for the first time in in uh, since you've been alive years, yeah. you know what i mean like this is unreal what does it feel like to be driving this 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 track through the streets of las vegas i mean i haven't done it yet but right. i mean i mean i'm i'm super excited i think you know growing up i've I've, um, you know, growing up in England, you're watching all these movies and you're seeing all these places in the States. And like New York was always a dream for me to go to New York. As you see all the, all the taxi cabs and the buildings. Right. I remember going when I was 17 and my mom saved up, took me out there. We had the best three days of our lives. Um, and then getting, come, getting to come out and, and go to Austin, for example, and see just the different, the different cities and the different vibes in these different cities. And right. growing up watching Casino, for example, and now, you know, and I've different this time. Yeah, like this I've time been out here and experienced casino, but like right. now I'm racing through. I'm gonna be racing through the strip with all those lights. It's gonna be, and there's only 20 of us that do it. Surreal. Out of eight billion people, or whatever. So right. it's crazy. I, speaking of that, I want to go back. You kart racing at the age of eight, right? Mm -hmm. What was that first win like for you? Do you remember what it was like to that first opportunity, that first podium? You were like. I think this is, yeah, I think we're going to do a lot more of this. Honestly, I, I don't remember the first podium that I had or the first win I had. I remember the first time I drove a go-kart and I was five. Whoa. And I, I remember um, it was like three corners and it's, I got in and um, by the second lap, I picked up this braking technique that I used through my whole karting career. And, um, and it's a part of the driving that I do today. So... I was meant to do what I'm doing. Yeah. Um, I mean, anybody who can get in a cart and pick up a braking technique. From the get-go. Yeah, you're probably doing the right thing. Because I would have been like, where does the key go? Yeah. <laughs> Which one goes fast? This one or this one? <laughs> it's unreal. I mean, it's, it's, it, is, it is really cool to see. And also, because it, your, your passion is so evident, right? Your, your, um, the way that you succeed, the way that you bring your whole team with you when you succeed, the way that people like the biggest celebs on the planet are are inspired by you. I, I was reading about the film that you're working on, um, the first of its kind for the sport, really capturing what it feels like to be behind the wheel of one of these incredible pieces of art. Uh, what does it feel like to know that you're about to bring this to people who've never experienced the sport before? Honestly, it's it's a real privilege, and I never ever you know I always wanted to be a Formula One driver. I never thought of the other things that would come along. But over the years, you you come up with new dreams, and um, it's such a great platform. I'm thinking about like, hey, we're in the states. We've got three Grand Prix here. How in Austin, I brought 60 young girls from Austin um, from different backgrounds who, you know, wanted to inspire them to become engineers or there's opportunity in our industry to get into. So we've really 
you know, having the having the platform and the opportunity to be able to put the la- you know put a ladder down and help people come up, um, shine a spotlight on great black creatives and diverse creatives, um, and for, you know, this movie, for example, is it's going to be. It's going to be amazing. Right, it's going to be amazing. It's great to see more and more people from different backgrounds that are into this sport, you know. And I've, what I'm working on with this nonprofit organization I started is trying to, it's not been a diverse sport, sport for a long, long time. No. And so I'm trying to change that. I'm trying to change that. I'm trying to put the work in and make sure that we create opportunities for people to come through. Yeah, I mean, you, you are, you, not only did you walk through the door, but you held it open for, for other people to walk through as well. I think Mission 44, our logo, is a door that's staying open, so you're right. Come on, man. I mean, we all have a responsibility to do that, right? Yeah. So, um, and uh, that's and, and then, I, then I get to race cars, which is... Come on. Yeah. And put Brad Pitt in his place. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> put Brad Pitt in his place. Oh, I damn in these two. Cause <laughs> <laughs> these two, it's been interesting seeing these two drive uh, on the track. And okay, what was it like to see them behind the wheel for the first time, did you give them pointers? Did you were you let? Did you let them? Were you in the ear? How did they do? Well, I was. I, I went round track with with Brad okay. in LA. We went f- out for a day and had some fun. And I was really actually, it was really interesting to see. He's, he's like a big racing fan. He he rides bikes, so he he already had. And we're not talking ability. about bicycles. No, he already had the ability. You could see he was. He just needed to hone in on that fine tune it because he's not spent time um, racing or anything like right, that. Right. So. Uh, so he picked it up real, real quick. Um, Damson took a little bit longer, but he's also then started to get really good. So it's interesting, and I'm, I'm excited to see. We've already seen a clip, like a little trailer. Right. It's, it's looking, it's looking amazing. Joe's doing such a great job. I'm gonna tell you, George Russell told me a little bit about the movie. Who oh, did? Yeah, he. T- <laughs> Is it? Oh, what he, what he say? What is it? Yeah, he told me he saw the trailer. Yeah, yeah. Hey. We showed, we showed all the drivers in Austin. What, what was the response? Uh, I think they're all blown away. I think they, they weren't really. You know, when you when you're working in an industry or, or anywhere where people are used to their ways, they've never. And sometimes it's, re, it's it's a lot of work to convince people to think out the box. Yeah. And so initially, when we brought up this whole movie idea, I'm sure there are people like, hmm, American company, for example, it's not been a part of the culture here. Are they really gonna? Be able to capture it. to encapsulate what Formula One is truly about, right? And um, that's like a UK company coming over and doing an NFL movie. You know what I mean? That because basketball is not part of our. Gr- you know, when you're growing up, you're playing soccer. Right. But um, but that's where I come in, and that's where I've been working with with the team, really making sure that uh, to cool BS basically on any crazy things that might happen in the racing scenes, and you know, make it authentic and exciting. And I think we've been able to achieve that. It's, I mean, it's incredible, man. It's incredible. I want to talk to you before we before we move on real quick to a, a, a rapid fire round about uh, Mission 44. It's it is it's not lost on me that you have worked very diligently to create opportunities for um, more people to be a part of this sport, more people to be a part of this industry, more people to have an, uh, um, a leg up in this experience um, and have a similar experience that you've had, you know, for a love of something. Um, what is it like to see the faces of young people, in particular people of color, who this whole world has opened up to them because you've said, I think there might be something here for you? Honestly, that, that's the thing that really keeps me going. Really? You know, yeah. Um, more than the races, more than the wins? Yeah, I think, I mean, it's, it's, racing has always been my passion, but we've all, it's been a lonely road since I was a kid, you know. My dad was the only one person of color that was along with me, and and... There were so many experiences that weren't comfortable, right. and when I go, when I do now work, for example, with Mercedes, a huge organization, and when you're at the racetrack and you're the only person of color in the meeting room, you're looking around, you're like, how is that still the case in the world that we live today? Right. And so, when you, after the work that we started doing with the Hamilton Commission, and now the work we're doing with Mission 44, and I see, for example, in Austin, when we had those 60 young girls come. Or the year before, we also had the same thing. Or I was in Brazil and I brought another 60 kids, um, or sorry, we brought 100 kids to the track. And it's just, it's just, honestly, it's a, you get emotional, and you're like, there's so much talent out there, and all they need is is to spark that interest, mm-hmm. and they can make, they can fly, you know. So for me, that's the most important thing that I've got to do. The racing comes second. That's for me. I've also I've also got to utilize this platform that I have. Yes. Many people don't, though, and it's on on those you know certain topics, and um, and it's it's great to finally see that the work's 
starting to actually have an effect. Paying off major, big time. Brother, I love you for it, seriously. It. So this is called our Speed City Rapid Fire. You, 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 you. <laughs> they told me that you loved the sound effects, so I thought I would. <laughs> they said that you would love it. I, I don't know, maybe not. Favorite music to listen to in the car? In the uh, in the car like this, yeah. yeah, yeah. I know I can't listen to I mean, music in the AC car. in the car. You probably don't have a like a MP3. I the, the, I, sometimes I wish I had music while I'm driving, but what would you listen to? Uh, I'll probably be listening to like Drake and J Cole or something like that. Not mad at it. Oh, Kendrick. Ah. You know. Not mad at yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. Dream car. You probably own it. But I don't know, maybe you have another one out there that you haven't been able to, to get a hold of quite yet. I do have my dream car. I know it. I know. I mean, <laughs> of course you do. What is it? My dream car was when I was, um, you know, when I was a kid growing up, my, I'm naturally crazy about cars, little toy cars. Um, and I would, for, so for Christmas or birthdays, that's what I would be asking for. That's like, I want a book on cars. So I remember getting a book of the world's fastest cars when I was... Um, it was like 1995, so it was 10. Right. And on the front cover was this uh, yellow McLaren F1 XP1, which was the world's fastest car at the time. Yes. And then it I, looks like a rocket. Yeah, and I got signed to McLaren um, around the same sort of time, I think it was. Uh, or like three years later, I got signed to McLaren, and I went to the factory, and that car was right there. Like, like you were 13? I was 13 when I got signed to McLaren. <laughs> and I saw that car was right there, and I nearly passed out. And I was like, just just a kid giggling running around this thing and every year every day I'd go to the office I would see that car and and at the time I was like what I said to my boss what have I got to do to get that car I will literally sell my what kidney like what what I gotta do what do I and, gotta do yeah. but you want a kidney <laughs> 13 uh, years old I love give it. you both I was like uh, <laughs> I was like um, so he's like if you win three world titles you can have the car but we we didn't win races uh, championships for a while so then I obviously joined this team and I obviously that deal had gone I won seven now but um but so, it wasn't uh, it wasn't for I'm, that team I'm here to give my so I had to go and buy it so I, I bought, <laughs> did, I bought. You get a, did you get a discount friends and family no no it was a vintage it's now a vintage car so <laughs> fire though it's, it's it's at home and I don't drive or anything but it's like a, it's a piece of art of course oh my gosh I love that story okay not afraid of speed clearly but what are you afraid of? Spiders. Man, my... Wait, what? Man, I, when I was five, four or five years old, I'd seen all the horror movies because my, my sisters are 10 years older than me. Right. And they would be babysitting me and they would be watching Freddy Krueger. I'd seen all the Freddy Krueger movies by the time I was five. Jace, I could never sleep. I was traumatized. And then I watched um, Arachnophobia when oh, I was five years old. But that's the one with the with the the with the, 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 the little yeah. sound when it lands on you. Yeah. No way! That thing terrifies me still today. To I like this day. I need to get therapy, bro. <laughs> I'm not mad at you. I get it. I get it. When he's walking up the stairway and they were coming out of that, it's like, yeah. ugh. I don't do spiders. It's so the worst. I see that, I run. Same. <laughs> I'm not mad at you. Okay, favorite passenger for you in the car? Who's like the person you love to ride with? Roscoe. My dog. Oh, I love Who is the worst passenger? Uh, my mom. It's my mom. Maybe not for you. I don't know if you've ever ridden the car with my mom, but like, mine is my mom. Worst passenger. Everything is terrifying to her. Probably, probably one of my aunties. Like my auntie Vanessa's. She'd just be talking the whole time. Oh, don't, don't, turn here, turn here, don't slow down. You know, like, and I'm not even going fast. It's like, like I'm below the speed limit. I don't know if you know. I do, I, I do this for a living, so I mean, we, I think you're good. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm actually dying to know the answer to this question. My last one. When they make the film about your life, I've heard this one before, yeah. right? Because it is an incredible story, truly has been already, and I know it will just continue to be. When they make the film about your life. Who would you like to see play one of you, like one of the versions of you? Who would you like to see play you in the movie? I don't think he's been discovered yet. Is that right? Yeah. You're right, because I haven't sent my audition tape. <laughs> I mean, think about it. Think about it. Just think about it. Just, 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 for, just for a second. Just think about it. Yeah, right? It could work. It could work. It could work. I'm just saying. I work yeah. on my accent. Yeah. I, mean, I got you have to go through that process. Yeah. But I got a car. <laughs> I, I audition. <laughs>